Go and sentence him there. Why are you, why are you doing all this drama? But the reason they bring Karen to court is they make a lot of money from bringing him to court. They spend an average of 500 million naira per bringing him to court. to court. Yes. Who makes that money? Is the DSS? Yes, yes. The, you know the DSS budget is not scrutinized like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just spend it's like security votes. So they just it's said, ah, we're taking Karen to court. So we brought this number of police. Okay. We block everywhere. All our security agents are there. Blah, blah, blah. blah. It's all scammed. State, thereby continuing to create the chaos in the southeast, thereby continuing to make the federal government waste money. Do you know how much the federal government is spending every day now? Because no five hundred million. They told us they spend five hundred million naira. Somebody is signing off that check. Somebody is signing it off. Who is signing off? Who is making money from it? Extra allowances are being paid to all the security men. So guys, Shogore was on an interview session during which he said that the DSS make a whole lot of money using Namdi Kalu's case. You can imagine that each time they come to court, they spend as much as 500 million naira. This is the money Nigeria is crying that they don't have. I mean, the Nigerian government keep telling Nigerians that there is no money. So, but you can imagine that every time Nandi, Namdi Kalu appears in court, that the federal government spends as much as 500 million naira just per court sitting. Nigerians, I find this worrisome. So let me allow you to listen to what Shore himself said. And don't forget that before now, some lawyers have equally cried out on how much the federal government is spending on this case. And one keeps asking if this case actually worth spending that amount of money when many children in Nigeria are out of school and many of our schools are in dilapidated situation. Let me allow you just watch this video for yourself. You've been in DSS detention. Another Nigerian who has been very vocal like you was also been in DSS detention and who has solicited so much attention from Nigerians. It's an Nambi Kalu. Yes. I'm sure you might have had interactions with him. I sorry if I call him Mazin Nambi Kalu. Yes. That is a title that his followers have bestowed upon him, Mazin Nambi Kalu, MNK. And this is a man that has passionate followership. He has passionate loyal followership from a certain region of Nigeria and all over the world. From your experience with him and all that, what do you think? Is there his 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 followers would be watching and they want to know? Do you think? In any nearest future, Nambi, Mazen Nambi Khan will be released, or you think that the Nigerian government will continue to play the hanky pack again to keep him in detention? What what should his followers expect from the Nigerian government? They say nobody can hold him down. It's just a matter of time. They will have to leave him and leave him forever. This is what happened to leaders of social movements that are unique in their origin. In their makeup, composure, and character. They will come, the state will go after them, but they become stronger as much. You know, the more oppression they get, the stronger they get, the more passionate forwards the command. So, what Nigerian state is trying to do is to see if they can break him. But unfortunately, he has passed that stage. He can't be broken anymore. Even if he breaks at this point, he His has message is an unbreakable message. Message. A message. So the best you can do is to find accommodation with him. And you saw what he did in court last time. It shows that he's still very much cognitively aware of his role in history. It is simply like I told them when they arrested, before they arrested me in 2019 that there's no judge that has ever tried history and succeeded as today. You know, we are people of history. And that's what came to pass. One day, they were the ones who went to court and said, my lord, we want to withdraw the charges against you. But I told them from day one, I told the judge, this is the I said, this is rubbish. Mm -hmm. Say, so, yeah, read the judgment, uh, read the charges. I said, when they finished reading, I said, I don't understand. But my lawyer said, I shall plead not guilty. The judge was right. I'm looking at her, she was a very pesky judge by that. I'm looking at her, I said, look at this one. What's the judge's name? Let's, let's call uh, it. Uh, Ijeoma Ujuku. Ijeoma Ujuku. Yeah. Eventually, she was transferred out of my She was uh, she wasn't happy because she felt she was used, used you know but i don't hold any grudge against her that is her historical role in what i came to do you know and the moment that part is over she had to move, had to move on. on they even ask her to continue to be coming for my case they say she's not doing it because 
Maybe when the case first came to our table, she didn't know the gravity of what was coming. That she was standing in the way of a tsunami. And when she realized what it was, she had to just step aside. And that's oh, so categorically, the judiciary is being held to hold Mazin and the Kano. Oh, absolutely. There's all those pronouncements they are saying in the court system is not, it has nothing to do with the judge. So what it, it is, is that the right this is for the judge is what we want you to say today over this kind of matter. Because basically, even other justices in the Nigerian system, including the Supreme Court, practically declare that Jonah Day's case doesn't exist. There's no case against him. Even if they try him for 10 years, they cannot present any evidence. But what they will do is that they will never go to evidence. <laughs> They'll just be adjourning, come today, come tomorrow, you file this, it's okay. Because all they need to do to waste your time in Nigeria is adjourn three times a year. You come, the, the judges will go on vacation from December till around February. Then in February when they call your case, they push it to, they push it to April, June. June. In June, they, June, go, they, go, they, go, they go for vacation for two months. So your case will not come back on the September. By September, they are in December. 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 That's, that's what they do. So they continue detention of In my case, for instance, we were in court for five years. They presented only one witness. In five years? In five years. The state of Nigeria presented, presented one TSS witness. guy who said he saw me. At the and I said there was going to be a protest. And there was only, <laughs> there was only, there was only witness. For Mazin and the Kalu. They, they have not presented any. any there's no point that I'm aware of. And I go to court on his behalf, his behalf every day, but they will never allow me to enter the court. They're, they're always waiting for me. I still went to court before the last hearing, and I was struggling with the DSS people outside there. I have footage of it. They collected my phone and collected it back. We were. It was, it was, a, it was a scuffle. It was a scuffle in front of the court. Because I told them, I said, if it's not that Nigeria is useless, how can DSS come in front of the federal court? People some of them don't even have YX certificate. To now be marking the name of judge, uh, lawyers. I said, I told the lawyer, I said, your MBA in Nigeria practice is useless. How can DSS be telling which lawyer can enter federal high court and which lawyer? Well, I told the DSS guy when they came and were returning my phone to me, I said, why are you wasting your time bringing Kanu to courts here? Just use one of your conference rooms, find the kangaroo judge, go and sentence him there. Why are, you, why are you doing all this drama? But the reason they bring Kanu to court is they make a lot of money from bringing him to court. They spend an average of 500 million naira by bringing him to court. To court. Yes. Who makes that money? In the DSS. The DSS. DSS. Yes, yes. The, you know the DSS budget is not scrutinized like you. Yeah. They just spend it's like security yeah. votes. So they just Most say, ah, we are taking Kanu to court. So we brought this number of witnesses. We, we block everywhere. All our security agents are there. Blah, blah, blah. It's all the scam. So all those paparazzi this, you are saying, this, yeah. this is the kind of revelations that we bring forth when we have our amazing interviews on IC Magazine. Yeah. The continued detention of Mazim Nadekalo within the DSS premises of the Nigerian government is a money-making scheme it for is. the DSS. It is you can quote me anywhere. Any for every court appearance that Mazin Abdukan comes out for, the DSS makes as much as 500 million, million naira. naira. Yes. You are hearing that from somebody who has been in that same yes. position where Mazin Abdukan has been. And as such, if an organization like the DSS makes that much money, do you think they would want to release Mazin Abdukan? Never. 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 So we see where his continuous detention is coming from. Anywhere. No judge, just, just like our guest has said, no judge has found anything incriminating about Mazin Ali Kanu. He's, 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 he's been discharged twice. He's been discharged twice. Even the Supreme Court said it, that it was Nigerian government that violated his bail <laughs> by invading his compound. That he didn't jump bail. That was what the Supreme Court said. Rules. <laughs> but in their own usual confusion, Arik Maru, they said, well, let him still go back and answer the rest of the charges. So what the judge would have done is to reinstate his bail since it was the army that went that went to get his bail. What is fundamental is Nnamdi Kano did not jump bail. You have no reason to have restored his bail, restore it, and the federal court is kind of toying and playing around with it. Thereby continuing to create the chaos in the southeast. Thereby continuing to make the federal government waste money. But do you know how much the federal government is spending every day Nnamdi Kano is coming? They told us they spent 500 million naira. Somebody is signing off that check. Somebody is signing it off. Who is signing up? Who is making money from it? Extra allowances are being paid to all the security men who are in Abuja because of Nnamdi Kanu. Your money, we, and we have been saying, the case of Nnamdi Kanu is not such that we need to spend scarce resources on. The federal government is caring about money. They don't have... Ladies and gentlemen of the media and members of the public, I think it's very necessary that we make very clear what happened in court today. We do not want to call it a travesty of justice because of the respect we have for the judiciary. But we are utterly disappointed that today bail was refused. On what grounds? 
the Supreme Court on 15 December criticized very severely the revocation of Mazen Lamdika atmosphere. In several pages, which we are going to make available to the media, at pages 19, 20, and 21 of Justice Against Judgment, he even suggested that the impartiality of the trial court in revoking the Nam Dekaro's bail is suspect. We didn't mind all of that, but still, we made an application, a fresh application, to my Lord, urging her to exercise discretion to restore Nam Dekaro's bail. She refused it without any reason whatsoever. And then we made a second application to accentuate the need for this bail application, pointing to the enormous challenges we face as defense counsel in consulting with the Nam Dekaro privately and confidentially at the detention facility of the DSS headquarters in Abuja. We are only allowed 30 minutes each as counsel on only Mondays and Thursdays for a cumulative period of two hours, twice a week, to consult with him separately. separately. And the federal government is hasting to have an accelerated trial. Yes, we do want an accelerated trial, but we have to have it under an environment that respects Section 36, Sub 6, B and C of the Nigerian Constitution. It's all about faith. It goes to the ground norm. It goes to the basic norms of the society that you must hear the other side. And to hear the other side, he has to have an adequate facility to prepare his defense and to consult his lawyers. It's the constitution that said it. It's not us that said it. So we came to my Lord with an application and said, listen, it's impossible for us to conduct this trial under this atmosphere of interference with his right to counsel. They eavesdrop on our conversations. In the little cubicle room of 10 by 10 where we consult with Mars in Lamica, they have secret listening devices and secret photographic and videographic devices. They listen to our conversations secretly. They take our secret photographs. And we adduce this evidence before my Lord. They, 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 they confiscate our legal documents. They don't allow us to take notes. Pray. You may be lay men and lay women. The general public may not be lawyers, but is this fair? How can you have trial under circumstances like this? It's not possible. So we're not stalling. It is the federal government that is stalling. We can't take notes. So what is the essence of it? We cannot prepare him adequately. We cannot talk with him. We whisper. We put our lips to his ear. We talk sort of voice. And so on and so forth. So this is the essence. This is what happened in court today. Where justice was turned upside down. When our two applications that go to fair hearing were refused. But we're going to bounce back. There are more applications to come. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Appeal is uh, ongoing. Yes. As I speak, today, by tomorrow, appeal is fine. Okay, excuse me. Um, please, uh, in addition to that, uh, yes. Uh, please. Yes. Yes. In addition to that, uh, uh, we uh, what happened to, uh, today is uh, an act of federal high court overruling the decision of the Supreme Court. I wanted to get it right because the Supreme Court said none the calendar never jump back that the court ought not have revoked that bell on the application of the violator of his right that is the federal government you cannot benefit from your own wrong and we all we, we thought that the supreme court would have exercised its power under section 6 of the constitution to make the consequential order directed that Nana Kali should be uh, should be released but they brought the, the directed that the trial should be uh, continued here and we should make an application of course we ought not have made any application court should have exercised his power uh, his power discretionary and releasing Nandekalu that they never did. Then, secondly, which is the most uh, fundamental, I had been going there to visit Nandekalu. They never allowed me to exercise my right as counsel to Nandekalu. And my right was violated. I took DSSS to Federal High Court. Federal High Court, one DSSS, ordered them to apologize to me and uh, and ordered that they should pay me 5 million naira for the, for close to two years now. They have not paid that uh, money and though I just allow it, that's why I have not enforced it because the percent is running on top of it. Nobody has appealed against it. So now we find some application before the court is in the court file asking my lord to prove that we don't have we are not free we are court has been taking judicial notice of that but all do not avail now the court said that we should apply since we cannot transfer the Kalu to to Kujo prison stating that there is no security at Kujo prison so that we are not applying that now the Kalu should be detained to be should be remanded in a, a private house and we are suggesting Abia State Government House or Abia State Legion Office. So that is the application. I want you to go for it. So that is it. Get it. Wait, wait, wait. I want to tell the press. Okay. I'm keeping the struggle alive. Yes. Now, I must tell us something. What I'm going to do is is almost like an opportunity lost to bring peace, immediate peace.
Center to the Southeast. The Supreme Court had given the Federal Record the opportunity to bring peace to the Southeast. And they lost and it. And unfortunately, they are toying with that opportunity given to them by the Supreme Court. All that the, all that the Federal Record needed was to go back to the ruling of the Supreme Court and follow it and give back the bill it had previously withdrawn. And then you will see absolute peace in the Southeast. But with what happened today, it's obvious that certain persons don't want that peace to return to the Southeast. And we are employing members of the public to please continue to interrogate the reason why the Supreme Court judgment of 15 December 2023 will not be complied with by a Federal High Court. We need a Federal High Court to simply obey the orders of the Superior Court. A court, look, you do not just, you did not employ the judges of the Supreme Court for the sake of employing them. Whatever order, whatever word they utter from their mouth touches on something fundamental. And in this case, in this case, in other circumstances, what is fundamental is and the canoe did not jump, jump bail. bail. You have no yeah, reason to have restored his bail. Restore it. And the Federal Court, instead of turning and playing around with it, thereby continuing to create the chaos in the Southeast, thereby continuing to make the Federal Government waste money. Do you know how much the Federal Government is spending every day now the canoe is coming? Million. They tell us they spend 500 million naira. Somebody is signing off that check. Somebody is signing Somebody's. it off. Who is signing up? Who is making money from it? Extra allowances have been paid to all the security men who are in Abuja because of Fundam Dekanu. your money. Wait, and we have been saying the case of Fundam Dekanu is not such that we need to spend scarce resources on. The federal government is spending about money. They don't have money, but they have all the money to pay all the security agencies. If you go outside, not less than 1,000 security agencies are on patrol in Abuja because of one single man. And tomorrow they will tell us they don't have money to pay salary of workers. <laughs> so we need them, we need them to be reasonable, we need them to do the right thing, we need them to do the proper thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. So guys, you have seen it for yourself. Honestly, the government of Nigeria has to think twice over this amount of money that is being spent on this case that we don't even know where it's taking Nigeria to. So so many people have said that the court has dismissed uh Nam de Carlo to go home, but the federal government is still holding him back. Or why not keep him on house arrest so that he can from there be coming to court? Why do we need to be spending this amount of money when we know that we have so many areas to, you know, to attend to? Look at agriculture in Nigeria. It's not booming. They will tell you there's no money, you know, and many people are unemployed. The government is not even busy in training some people, giving them skills. They will tell you there is no money. Our education education system is down. When you look at the buildings and you know, the funding of the, the universities in Nigeria and so many things, how much is ASU even asking for? That the federal government is spending 500 million naira each time Namdekalo comes to court. So guys, I think this is something that what you know talking about and that is why I decided to upload this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you. Thank you.